Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader .com. Uh, weekend update show. Hope everybody is doing great. Hope everybody is enjoying the start uh, for their long uh, Labor Day uh, weekend. Just a fairly reminder, market is closed on Monday. So if you are uh, waking up early uh, that you forgot that it's a holiday and you start smashing your computer because it doesn't turn on, or at least your platform doesn't go on, well, keep in mind, we are off. So be easy, be a friend to your computer. Uh, other than that, if you are brand new to the channel, guys, thank you very much for tuning in, finding us, joining us, all that good stuff, giving us a couple of minutes of your time. If you could be so kind, that's all we ask is uh, like the video, like the video, show your support for the channel, click share, come aboard, all that good stuff. Just one uh, piece of announcement. If all you guys know, uh, we've been doing these random, uh, random celebration of my 25th year. Uh, anniversary in trading a lot of time. Uh, this is the last one. This is the absolute last one. If you are uh, interested in pivots, I mean, watching this channel um, and something that you believe uh, could be a benefit to you in the intraday ranks, the momentum trading part of your uh, game, and you would want to try the PS60 theory for the next uh, 30 days, see if it's a right fit for you. It's not a right fit for everybody, I can promise you, but uh, if it is a right fit for you, uh, this is a perfect time. 25 bucks representing 25 years, kind of corny, whatever the case may be. But again, this is the last opportunity to do so. Uh, kick the tires, see if it's for you. And it just shows you a kind of an alternative way uh, from the retail public from the normal. So that's a little piece of my business. We kind of get out the way. The link is below. I think Kenyon is going to put the link in below into the comment section. And I will look forward to working with a lot of you guys. So let's talk about the tape. Uh, definitely one of the craziest weeks I remember uh, for 2024. Uh, we've been on this battle area of the 50-day moving average for the last, you know, going back to the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, the last seven days. So basically a week and a half uh, worth of trading, uh, losing the 50-day, defending the 50-day, reclaiming the 50-day, losing it again, closing below the 50-day two days in a row, gapping up, losing the 50-day again. It looks like the end of the world. It looks like we're about to roll over and completely die uh, before the long weekend and yada, yada, yada. Explain the incredible, explain uh, the improbable, but explain the rationale of the scoreboard that the Bulls, after everything is said and done, not only reclaim back the 50-day moving average on the close, but now we are very, very close of reclaiming the 10-day moving average. And why the 10-day moving average is important, uh, if you are brand new to us, uh, again, uh, the PS60 workshop, there's two of them. I, I forgot, I'm not really in, I know it sounds really weird, but I really don't know how the business side of Access to Trader works. I, I know there is a free workshop, uh, at least the first one. I don't know if it's the second one, but it breaks down uh, the initial PS60 theory, two, three, four hours, whatever the case may be. And the 10-day moving average is the birth of the trade, right? Uh, the 50-day moving average is the birth of the trend. But once the trend is established, the 10-day moving average, if you watch uh, the workshops, it will be uh, labeled as the birth of the trade. And you can see here, the 10-day moving average on the queues has been kind of um, a, a, a soft rejection. As you can see, it got rejected here on August the 27th, got rejected here on August the 29th, and got rejected here on Friday, despite this massive, massive rally. And you can see here, uh, you can see probably off the, off the five, you can see it, how we went from destruction levels, possibly having a horrible, horrible narrative going into Monday for investors to absolutely going bananas uh, into the close and the cues uh, again, very, very close, putting this four day channel into rejection into the 10 day. Guys, write this down. This is going to be a very, very important level uh, for Monday. If the bulls can reclaim that level on Monday, we should be able to rally. It should be a launching point. So write this down. 
827, the high there was 477.84. So let's just not split hairs. Let's call it 478, right? Uh, also, 477.93 was the high from 829. So you can see here two points of reference on the 10 day moving average. This is basically it. There's no really, uh, nothing extra to really to talk about. Uh, if the bulls can start building above the 478 level, and the word building just means price action, volume continues to maintain over the 478 level. So when people ask what building means, that's kind of what it is. Price action is developing above that level. So if the bulls can continue to build or just reclaim at first that 478 level, any close above 478 confirms the 10-day moving average. And we start moving into this 483 a linear regression line, and ultimately where the sellers got tired on August the 22nd, all the way back to 85. So very, very important levels uh, going into Monday session, uh, which is uh, 478. Write this down. 478 is the big level. And if we bulls can reclaim, uh, we start to charge higher. Uh, for the bear side, right? For the bear side, uh, and I know it's crazy, but you know we've been playing ping pong off the 50-day moving average. So would it shock me if we gap down on Monday and just start going into the bottom channel? Nothing, you know, absolutely nothing, um, you know, shocks me anymore. That's what we always talk about. We reiterate the point of be ready on both sides. And again, as an active trader uh, that trades both sides of the market, I'm prepared on both sides. I know the levels on both sides, so I, I'm not cheering for any side. I would honestly love to see the bulls reclaim back that 478 level because I know there's a lot of names we'll go through a lot you know we'll go some charts uh in a minute that if they can mirror what the cues are doing we can get some violent moves to the upside so I'm actually cheering actually I take it back I actually am cheering uh for the bulls to reclaim that 478 level because we're going to get some really really massive uh potential moves uh going into uh Monday right Monday and Tuesday to the downside, uh, let's watch that 468 level, right? 468 was the low of last week. So obviously any close below 468 would continue the violence, especially to the downside. So 478 to the upside, 468 to the downside. Everything else is a bunch of noise. The bulls, the bears, the, you know, the, the, the parakeets, the, you know, the turtles, the snakes, everybody, everybody's watching, uh, for those levels to see which side, uh, will, confirm if you look at after all the wildness uh if you look at the indexes uh s p up two tenths the down made all-time highs uh up a little bit of one percent and despite the nasdaq looks like it was about to fall off a cliff especially on friday uh nasdaq was only down a little bit less than one percent for the week but more important is how they close and projecting uh for next week and if you look at a lot of charts there's a lot of charts that are really going to mirror the NASDAQ 100. And let me give you guys some uh, some setups that I really like going into next week, right? Um, let's start off with Tesla, right? As you can see, the same thing as the Qs, the same thing with Tesla. We saw on Thursday and Friday, even, even into weakness, uh, we were watching, you know, 215, 220s, 225s, for next week being a uh, bet on the options market. If Tesla could just get back above this three day, excuse me, this four day range, Monday will be day five. So it's a full week of distribution. If Tesla could get back above this range and confirm the 10 day moving average, the birth of the trade, I think we will shoot right back to the 50 day moving average of roughly 220, 221. Look at Amazon, right? Amazon has been kind of a forgotten soul. Again, this is one of the very few names that are below the 50-day moving average. You can see how close we are, right? How close we are to reclaiming back a moderate level before we juice back to the 50-day moving average. So watch Amazon as well. Uh, Friday, it had a big engulfing candle, took out one, two, three, four, five days worth of selling. If it could just reclaim this whole supply, just like Tesla, we could shoot back up uh, into the 180s as well. Look at Meta, right? Meta, same thing, right? It's putting in the same exact, same exact uh, scenario as Tesla, as uh, the Qs. It's been rejected now twice, twice in the last five days uh, off the 10 day moving average. If Meta can reclaim the 10 day moving average, you have a move coming all the way back to, to the highs from two weeks ago, potentially. Uh, back to the 540s. Again, it's an exaggerated channel, but that's the whole point. The longer a stock trades in a channel, the higher probability when it gets above that channel, the next move is going to be uh, super duper violent. 
Uh, look at a name like PLTR, right? Again, same thing. All these charts have the same thing in common. They had massive moves. They came into rising support. Uh, option flow, you're seeing some short-term expiration, $35, $40 uh, calls come in. Same thing. You can see here twice, uh, PLTR got rejected uh, off the 10-day moving average. If it could reclaim it, uh, maybe it shoots back to uh, recent highs. So that looks great as well. Uh, we talked about AFRM on Thursday. We had a great pivot, really, really great pivot on Friday uh, off this AFRM. We talked about it on, on the Thursday video. Uh, if, if this thing opens down into profit taking, into rising support, Shorts going to get trapped. And once they got trapped and took out Thursday's highs, this thing just absolutely moonshine, guys. This was a phenomenal, phenomenal move. Here is the, you know, here is what I'm talking about. It's a rising 60 minute support. Congratulations for you guys in the webinar who caught not only a dip, but the, you know, three and a half dollar move uh, to the upside. Again, $50 October calls uh, coming into uh, this name as well. SoFi. SoFi looks really good. SoFi had an inside day on Friday. On Thursday, we were seeing short-term expiration, uh, 850 calls. You can see it broke out of this channel here on Thursday, rested on Friday, inside day, when half the volume bar. If it could get back above Thursday's highs, this thing could wake up as well. Um, NVIDIA, look, here's my kind of take on NVIDIA. Uh, I, I thought they had good earnings. Okay, I thought everybody uh, thought they had good earnings. Um, NVIDIA is going to... It, is. I'm not saying it's my least favorite for the week if the market wakes up, because if the market does wake up, I think everything's going to wake up. But the one thing um, I do always notice when a stock comes out with earnings and get hits on earnings, and the next day puts in an inside day, there's always a probability it's going to test the previous day's lows. So unless the market really explodes on Monday or Tuesday, I think NVIDIA, before there's a possibility of going up, has to retest uh, its earnings lows. Doesn't have to have to, but I, I am conscious for potentially giving us one more trade to the downside before it holds and start resuming with everything else. But I definitely, you know, obviously want to watch that uh, as well. Uh, Avago looks great, right? Same thing. It's the same thing as everything else, guys. It held uh, its support, reclaimed back to 50. Now it just needs to get back above uh, the 10 day moving average. Again, that is the birth uh, of the trade. And um, I think that's it. I mean, realistically, every stock, if you go through if you go through the NASDAQ 100, uh, pretty much every channel is going to look the same. Always look for the stocks that are above the 50-day moving average, though those are obviously the stocks with the highest probability of the next move. But when you're seeing stocks already above the 50-day, they can kind of go sideways, okay? Uh, those are the names that I think you can catch a really aggressive move back to the upside as well. So again, for all you guys who are uh, curious about pivots and the PS60 theory, 25 bucks for 30 days, uh, help us close out my 25th anniversary. Uh, you'll quickly see in the first uh, in the first day or so if this is right for you, something that can complement uh, your trading, your lifestyle, your possibly your account size, and your way of thoughts. Guys, God bless everybody. Enjoy your long weekend, folks. Again, we don't get a lot on long weekends, so enjoy your long weekends. Uh, barbecue, sun, fun, pool, beach, whatever the case may be. Love your life, love your family, and God be with you. I will see you all on Tuesday. Take care.